All right, everyone. Welcome. We are back. Yeah. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? What's we are good? back again. All right. Another Wednesday. Yeah. Wrath and Grace. We are on the Wrath and Grace page. This is the basement, though. Yeah. Wrath and Grace has entered the basement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Make sure uh, y'all um, check us out. And uh, we are on here every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. A little loud there. And, um, yeah, just a couple things. Make sure you share. Share the page. <clears throat> Facebook.com slash Wrath and Grace. It's important uh, to get the word out um, as we seek to minister and share uh, some of our thoughts uh, and lives and root that into our theology, of course. Um also, I just want to give a quick shout out to my man, uh, Dre Brown. Um, we'll be uh, rotating his uh, beats here uh, live. And um, if anybody's interested, uh, here's some of his information. Uh, that's my man, Steph. I met him back in uh, college in Millersville. When you were in college? No. <laughs> yeah, that's, that'd be dirt old. I'm just letting back. them know that. Just letting them know that. <laughs> now, nah, when we were on campus ministering, and uh, he he's, he's an amazing producer, and uh, there's his information. You guys could check him out. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll put his info, hopefully, on the thread or somewhere so y'all can check it out. Might want to turn that down a little bit. All right. Yeah. Y'all got a good enough uh, sound to this these beats. Y'all can go and check them out. He's yeah, good, y'all. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He he's dope. Good. Right. He's dope. So this episode, this is episode 10 of The Basement. Can you believe that? 10 episodes in. Yeah, man. We reach a milestone. Yeah. 10 episodes in. Consistent. And they said we wasn't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I had there a cup of coffee beforehand, y'all. <laughs> oh, it's over. It's over. Yeah, yeah. So this is called Baby Talk. So we will be talking about them babies. So what do you mean specifically? Help people to understand. Like, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be delving into the abortion slash pro-life slash pro-choice topic. Mm. So we're covering a lot of ground in a little bit of time. Yeah, man. Or at least we're trying to. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important, too, to let people know that this topic to us, it's... Um, to, to just say it's political would not do it well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a lot deeper than oh, sure. it being a political issue, even though it is out there in the world. It's, it's definitely political. We're right. Not, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think deeper. Right. More foundational than that. This is a a, a serious biblical, you know, uh, a meaningful discussion topic that we need to have, not just because it's out there in the air. Uh, but because the Bible's already spoken, 
for to, sure. to this issue, right? For sure. For so we're sure. out to see what God thinks about it. You know? Yeah. What does God say? Yeah, man. Um, just so you guys know, um, this is like always where we want to hear from you. We don't like to just come on here and throw information in your face. We want to hear from you. So there's going to be some questions that we ask. Um, you guys can throw input in at any time. You guys can comment, like, share, um, all of those things just so we can get this 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 episode out to as many people as possible. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't be able to reach as many people if it wasn't for you guys supporting us. So yeah. thank you guys in advance. Those of you that are watching, what's up? What's up? We got Davina. We got Sharon. We got Jainer. We got Rafi. We got Lynette. We got all y'all wonderful people out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out to y'all. Make sure y'all hit that like button and share it real quick. Um, before we get into this, though, I do want to say a couple things. Yeah. I do want to say a couple things. So feel free to jump in that comment section as we go, guys. Ask questions if, if, if you want to. Um, I do have a couple things I want to say. One, we don't want to get into the deep politics of this issue. Not this episode. This is going to be a part one of many more to come. As all topics that we touch on here, we can't get into it all the way in 45 minutes to an hour. So we want to touch on some things today. And follow up with it another time. So we yeah. don't want to get too deep into the politics of it. Um, so we're not going to dive too deep into Planned Parenthood or the political side of this um, and forget about the heart of the issue. Right. Right. That's yeah. actually what the Levites and the priests did in the Good Samaritan parable. And we saw how they became so involved with the law mm -hmm. that they forgot about the actual dying person that yeah. was in front of them. Yeah. Um, we don't want to get into the gender shaming of this. I don't want to hear none of that from y'all. I don't want to hear y'all say men can't speak on women issues. Um, that's that's dumb, and it's about the same thing as saying non-murderers cannot make laws against people who murder. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? It, it just doesn't make sense. Just yeah. because you don't personally uh, go through it doesn't mean you can't speak on it. Yeah, and, and adding to that, yeah, we can always know what God's word says says about it. exactly because you know i was going to even follow up with that and right. say that's like saying single men can't speak on marriage topics so <laughs> right. i what i guess that excludes jesus from speaking on marriage <laughs> topics that excludes paul from speaking on marriage right. come on man right i don't right. want to hear none of the gender shaming today right um also this is a topic that is going to touch on generational struggles yeah. What do I mean by that is that my generation and Los's generation, so that's anywhere from the 20s to the 40s and 50s, right? We're dealing with where, you know, we're dealing with parenthood struggles and issues. Mm. So my generation is actively having kids and abortions and we're making tough decisions, right? Yeah. Los's, which is on the higher end of the, the older <laughs> end of the spectrum. His generation is dealing with the after effects of decisions already being made. Right. Yeah. Right. So you guys are yeah, getting yeah. a wide perspective on this one. Um, and one more thing is that I want to let you guys know this message is for those, number one, that are pro-life and engaging in abortion, in abortion discussions. Number two, this, this message is for the pro-choicers, especially the Christians that are wrestling with more with the morality of tough decision making in parenthood um, number three this is for those that are ignorant of the difficulties that come with this topic and number four this is for those that are caught in between in the gray areas yeah. and they're a little bit confused yeah i think you know my generation is dealing with reflecting now mm -hmm. regretting repeating if we haven't learned from our mistakes right you know and even allowing Mm. It's a continue, you know, it's, it's funny that looking back now, you know, being 44 years old, yes, I'm 44 <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's how old I am. <laughs> it is what it is. 44. 44. And, uh, <laughs> now looking back and looking at life, looking at things done, mistakes made, and even, even like, uh, reflecting on our culture growing up, like seeing the systemic issues like this um and just seeing even how like at least in hip-hop culture how things shifted you know what i'm saying it, it, it's 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 crazy right um, to see right. it shift and and to see like the one song I, I shared you know retrospect for life right yeah and how i told you i felt like it was too late at that point when common came out with that joint it felt like yeah you're right but 
Right. He he was he was the outcast with that message on the, at that point. Yeah, because uh, conscious hip hop, you know, was kind of like just you know, kind of uh, kind of abandoned, you know, yeah. for commercialized hip hop. You know, yeah, Common was one of those originators. He was definitely yeah. one of those. And what's crazy is some of his views now are actually opposite to what that video is. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. That's what yeah. sucks about it is yeah. that he's yeah. switched. And it's funny because, I, you know, I always bring hip hop into this. I remember Jay-Z's <laughs> line says, um, I used to want to rap like, I used to want to rhyme like Common Sense, but I did five mil. I ain't been rhyming like Common Sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, right. and, and so right. he's talking about the fact that, you know, he used to want to dive deep like Common would. And I yeah. say would because he used to. He's not getting into those things yeah. like he used to. A lot of his stuff is politically correct, right. which sucks because it's like he was one of the few voices that would speak on topics from like a original standpoint where it wasn't what everybody else was trying to do. He right. was he was he was okay to he was stand an artist. out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know, for sure. Like, now uh, it's just rappers. Yeah. Back then you had yeah. a hip hop artists. You yeah. still have some hip hop artists, but right. yeah. Right. For sure. So yeah. So anyway, yeah, I, those are some things that I wanted to talk about beforehand yeah, before we get into this. Um, those of you that are watching, again, go ahead and like and share the video. I threw a question in the comment section. For those of you that are watching, go ahead and comment on that. Um, go ahead and like it um, and, and then go ahead and comment on the, um, in the thread right there. So my question is, and Los, you can answer this as I'm saying this out loud. Um, is this topic essential? Or how important do you think this topic is? Where do you stand on this topic and why? Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, it is essential. There's there's no way around it. Um, we're talking about life, you know, in the mother's womb, you right. know. So we're, we're talking fundamentally about, you know, where we came from as far as, you know, coming from the womb and then, you know, being alive. And the Christians should be preoccupied with that. You know, when okay. something is uh, systemically out to undo what God is doing. Yeah. Um, even though we know that ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, God is sovereign. What I'm talking about is what the scriptures say about, you know, life uh, in the womb and how God is involved and how we get involved and we destroy mm. what God is putting together, you know, and, and uh, how foul and how prideful that is of us so it is essential for us to discuss openly about that it is important and to neglect it i think it would be sin yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying for, for a church sure. to avoid it a lot of churches do avoid it they don't want to talk about it but we have to and i think they're afraid of it because it's become so political right that when you mention abortion from the pulpit people tag you know, uh, uh, political parties to that. Okay. Democrat, Republican, pro-life, pro-choice. And y'all need to wake up. You know what I'm saying? This is a real issue. Um, All y'all. All y'all. Yeah. And, you know. Better wake up. Pastors, leaders, churches need to get up and forget about the political air. Uh, let's, let's focus on what God has said and be strong about this issue, man. Th that's a life in the womb. Period. You know For what I'm sure. saying? For sure. Um, so... It is essential for us, man. Uh, we have to talk about it. And where do I stand on this topic? Well, you know, I don't like to say I'm pro-life or pro-choice or whatever. I like to say I stand with God on this. Pro-Christ. You know? Pro-Christ, man, <laughs> all the way. I almost called this episode pro-Christ, but I was like, nah, nah, nah. But well, that's I mean, our stance, though. Really? Yeah. That's, that's what our yeah, stance man. is, pro-Christ. Yeah, yeah, essentially. And, and In so, an anti-Christ culture, we have to remain pro-Christ. Uh, absolutely. Bar. Right. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about the anti-Christ. I don't know if we'll talk about this later, but that even... We will. Right. So, yeah. So that's where we stand. We stand firmly on what the Bible says about life. Uh, uh, and, and that's where we go. Yeah. You know, that's what we do. You guys keep on answering that question. We're going to get in the comment section. What's up? What's up to everybody that just joined us? Y'all go ahead and make sure y'all like the video. Keep on commenting in the comment section share. and go ahead and share it. Need that share, share, the, yeah. share the crap out of this video. <laughs> I drank some coffee before. Oh, so yeah. man. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the first one today. All right. Um, my body, my choice. That's right. a common phrase that we hear today. Yeah. Um, and, and right away when I hear my body, my choice, that stance is automatically making me think that the baby is something like an intruder. Mm. An unwanted person in the house of the woman that we would call her body. Mm. 
and it, and it just makes the baby seem like an intruder or even like a parasite that's just yeah. sucking the life yeah. from the mom and it's yeah. like no 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 that's not how we have to look at this right here um so as as we go ahead with this my body my choice right here these are some things that we need to consider um the value of life decreases or is dismissed once you become dependent upon others for your survival this is what is the common phrase the common thought today is that your 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 value of life decreases or is dismissed once you become more dependent upon others for mm. for your life right and i think that's just wrong yeah um there was an article that i read the other day um and it was talking about lecrae's stance on things and how ben watson responded to it mm. right and i'm pulling it up right now Sorry about that. Um, Sorry. Lecrae had tweeted um, on his page that he had an abortion beforehand. He paid for someone to get an abortion. And this was talked about on his project. So mm. those of you that already listened to his project, you're probably not surprised by him saying that. Right. Pulling it up right now. Sometimes it takes a minute. All right. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead and... um. Sorry, go ahead and get in the comment section right yeah, here while I'm pulling that. this up. Because no doubt. It's not pulling up for some Continue reason. to comment, too. Make sure y'all comment. We want to interact with y'all. Sharon Bright Boxley says, as believers, how do we stand against what the word says? Once you give your life to Christ, abortion should not be an option. True that. That is what's up. Yeah, very Amen. true. Amen. You can't, you know, being pro-choice and Christian is, that's a contradiction. I'm sorry. Uh. To be for abortion, let's avoid, you know, the, the pro-choice, pro-life tags. But to say that, you know, um, terminating a pregnancy in the womb and being Christian and being okay with that is not, you right. know, uh, yeah. Those are clashing worldviews right there. Um, Joe Cabana Boy says, what's up? Yo, what up, brothers? What's going on? Davina Ferrano, it is extremely essential. Why? It tells you how important scripture is to a person and or church to that. Right. Raphael says the sad thing about all this is women who feel God won't forgive them for having an abortion. We must tell them all all that God will forgive them. Yes. Yeah. 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 There is forgiveness, man. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to be touching on this, this stuff today, too, guys. Right. Don't think that we're not going to. We are <laughs> definitely going to be touching yeah. on this stuff. That's this is a, a touchy topic, too. It is. We're not ignorant of, you know, the the casualties, you know what I'm saying, that take place uh, emotionally, you know, mm -hmm. and mentally with women who's gone through this. Uh, so we're not here sitting here like, you know, y'all, whatever. It's like, you know, we understand. Definitely right, understand right. those issues. So back to what I was saying. Um, we'll come back to the comment section. Right. Um Lecrae tweeted, he said, I've paid for an abortion. I regret it. I won't pretend I'm fully educated on the policy nuances or woman's experiences. I just don't seem to hear the voices crying against the murder of children inside the womb as the same ones that are crying about crying about those outside the womb. Right. And so Watson, which we will be speaking about later too, that that difference in, in people talking about caring about the lives of those inside the womb compared to those right. outside the womb right, right 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 so ben watson says here i am bro in the womb outside the womb conception the grave count me in standing for life does not have to be a mutually exclusive event so he's for caring for those inside the womb and outside the womb mm. right but there's a lot of people that aren't and we'll touch on that later but i thought ben watson's wife had a pre pretty good perspective on this mm. She said, an infant once born is still complete, completely dependent on the bodies of others for survival, but no one thinks an infant lacks the right to live. Mm. Dependency does not eliminate humanity. In fact, it enriches humanity. And so she goes on to say pretty much that people that make this argument that because the baby is totally dependent upon the mom, there's no point in the baby um, even being born if the mom doesn't want to because it's the mom's choice the the mom is uh, the baby is totally dependent upon the mom and i think this, this is a backwards um 
I think it's a backwards argument because you got to ask yourself. Imagine feeling this way about the babies outside the womb. Aren't they still in need of the mom to take care of them? Yeah, same thing. The mom still needs to take care yeah. or somebody still needs to take care of that baby once it leaves the womb. You can't just deliver a baby and leave that baby there and expect to come back a couple weeks later and it's still alive and right. everything like that. It, that's not how it works. Right. Still needs someone to take care of the baby outside the womb, just like inside the womb. Right. Yeah. Do we feel this way about the poor and needy? We take care of the poor and needy. Are they no longer... They no longer have that right to live anymore because they're dependent upon us to take care of them. What about the elderly? What about the handicapped? Yeah. Do they not no longer have a right to live because they're being taken care of by us? I don't think that your dependency upon yeah. someone else takes away your right it's, or dismisses. It, it's not a sustainable worldview, man. Not at all. You know, it's not you, at all. You're picking and choosing at that point. It's, right. it, it's not across the board a worldview that's sustainable. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And one that I don't even think they actually live out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, no, because no. of course they're not gonna yet. They're not gonna get rid of the elderly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? At least yeah. that's how they're thinking right now. I don't now. know if like, you've ever read The Giver. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, and, and there's a bunch of books that talk about this right. stuff. And but that's the lot. There, that's the conclusion to it. There's countries in the world you know? that actually do that. You know what I mean? There's countries yeah. where you you get to a certain age, you can't take care of yourself. It's commit suicide. The person it's commits wild. suicide. It's yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is the part where we'll get into some stats right here. I do want to say this, though, is that Planned Parenthood obviously has an evil agenda behind us all. Mm -hmm. We will touch on Planned Parenthood in another episode one day right. um, in the future, Lord willing. Um, but I just thought this was a crazy quote is that Planned Parenthood actually believes that pregnancy is an STD. <laughs> they actually say pregnancy is a sexually transmitted disease and you can look that one up that's crazy it goes to show you like we put our all our trust in these planned parenthood groups and stuff like that just for them to think that pregnancy is actually an std mm. it's an inconvenience um they look at abortion as a backup plan yeah. anyway i know you had some stats on this well i mean you know first of all the roots of planned parenthood you know uh come from you know margaret sanger not to get deep Right. You know what I'm saying? But there is a truth to the root of what that whole thing is about, where oh, yeah. she was uh, preoccupied with economic conditions. Mm -hmm. And so that led her to uh, really buy into eugenics, the whole eugenics movement. She was into that. Um, you know, um, she is uh, definitely about um, white supremacy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the, that whole movement really birthed into uh, uh, planning abortion clinics mostly in black communities for sure for i mean sure. there's it no was, doubt about it you know what i'm saying it was definitely strategic right and then we have more than 19 million black babies that have been aborted since 1973 <sighs> 19 million people the biggest killer of black people the, and and that's okay we're looking at 19 million people that aren't here that's not counting you know what i'm saying the grandchildren yeah, that's not counting right sons exactly. and that's, daughters. Yeah, all the legacies that. that are right destroyed Triple at that, that point. You yeah, know what I'm saying for sure, uh, for sure. So that's not a s small number just by that by itself. Like we're talking about legacies and generations, man. Yeah, there's a direct link to hatred, racism, and population control when it yeah, comes man. to all of this. There's a direct link, and we need to to realize that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not to even mention all of the tragedy that comes whenever you do abort a baby. Um, the bad mental and the physical health issues that you're going to go through as a, as a mother who decides, yeah. to, or a female, who decides to abort your baby. Right. Um, all of the physical things. It's directly linked to more, uh, to more of a, uh, um, uh, you're more likely to have breast cancer. If you look at these stats, man, it's ridiculous yeah. um, that we're still in a culture that actually, like, encourages to abort babies. Aggressively encouraged. Aggressively, you know, they, for they're, sure. They're, they're going into political fields, they're, to states, they're, they're protesting states, you yeah. know, and things like that. And, they, you know. It's a hot topic. It is. It's a know? hot topic. But, yeah. and, and that's without even getting into the abortion prices compared to adoption prices. Right. It's, it's easy to ad abort a baby. What, a couple hundred? Yeah, uh, the financial cost ranges uh, to abort about three hundred to anywhere from three hundred to eight hundred. Yeah, but then to actually adopt, 
<laughs> it can cost a five thousand all the way up to forty thousand. That's backwards, man. Oh my god, something's wrong with that. Yeah. So the whole world is already set up, and you know what? This proves what the Bible says about the world. You know, the God of this world. Yeah. You know, He's the one ruling right now, not over, of course, God and in Christ. He rules over everything, but right now He has jurisdiction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the way the world is functioning and running, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, that's dark. That's evil. It, that something like that would take place, man. It's direct population control. Yeah. Um, it, it's on the same level as, you know, the same way that it costs um, just the comparison between adoption prices and abortion prices is the same way. It's, it's so much easier to buy soda and snacks. So much cheaper to buy soda and snacks than it is to buy healthy food. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. it's direct population control. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's like, why not? You know, the poor obviously end up with bad health because it's cheaper to buy healthier yeah. food. I mean, to buy unhealthier food. Yeah. Um, and I just thought this was kind of funny is that like vegans won't eat eggs. Right. But they're quick to say that there's no life in a human fetus. Mm. So they won't eat eggs because they feel like that's life that yeah. they're destroying and they don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. Yet they're so quick to say that there's no life in, hu in a human fetus. I, and you know what? It makes sense because apart from God, you're left with contradictions already. Absolutely. Uh, so so that's that's the thing is, you know, an unbeliever is living a contradictory life. Yeah. They're fighting and suppressing the truth that they know about God with unrighteousness, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the like. That's what comes out of an already contradicted worldview. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I just want to say this one more part before we get into the next section is that eliminating the parent and the child living in poverty and the mental trauma that comes from that is not worth destroying the life of the baby. Right. Because that's one common argument where it's like, I don't want to raise my kid in poverty, so I'm just going to get rid of the baby. I don't want to um, go through all that trauma of, you know, struggling and it's not worth destroying yeah. the life of a baby it's right. never worth that it never balances out or is in favor of the of the former than the latter yeah i have a quote from retrospect for life that speaks a little bit on that if i can quote that quick. yeah go ahead bro he wrote knowing you the best part of life do i have the right to take yours because i created you irresponsibly subconsciously knowing the act i was a part of the start of something i'm not ready to bring into the world had myself believing I was thorough. Mm. I looked into my mother's stomach, wondering if you're a boy or a girl, mm. turning this woman's womb into a tomb. But she and I agree, a seed we don't need. You would have been much more than a mouth to feed, but someone, I would have fed this information I read to someone. My life for you, I would have had to leave. Instead, I led you to death. I'm sorry for taking your first breath, first step, and first cry, but I wasn't prepared mentally nor financially. Having a child shouldn't have to bring out the man in me plus i wanted you to be raised within the family you know what i'm saying that song really captured that struggle that decision making yeah. what do we do you know what do we do with this now i would like to see him spit that at one of his most recent concerts well that ain't gonna happen in this climate no nah, way nah that's that's a uh, suicide yeah, you know yeah, what I'm career, for career, career. For yeah, sure. you're done for sure, for sure. But it, it just when it came out, man, it was just like you, I was feeling it, and you knew it was already happening. You know, this abortion, and, and just uh, you know, I just felt like it was too late, man. It's already happening. This is what, and hip hop wasn't even feeling it. Right, they were all on a whole different page. Right, you know? right. Um, let's get to the comment section. Yeah. All right. Where do we leave off? I think we left off with Francis. Um, Francis said, you never say my baby, my choice. Um, dehumanization. Right. Um, right. Lonnie said, let him that has an ear, let hear. Let him who hasn't, let him that has an ear hear what the spirit says to the church. I am listening. Amen. Yep. Um, Karen says, sanctity of life. For babies, for people crossing our borders, death row. Can you have one without the other? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Alfie says the word of God tells us if if you shall not. Don't know if I can make that right. Out. Yeah. I think he's talking about not not killing. That's right. what the word God right. tells us. Amen. I, and Mario says that abortion is uh, free in Canada now. Right. That's crazy. I di I didn't know that. 
that's yeah. something that's something definitely that is alarming the fact that abortion is free yeah in certain places of the world yeah well yeah i guess that would be considered part of their health care that's paid for i guess yeah yeah i did have a question though right yeah i wanted to get your thoughts on it um there was a quote that andrew fletcher said okay because we talk about the political atmosphere to this issue the laws and everything okay but i did want to talk a little bit about the music Mm. you know what i'm saying because he said this is a quote from him he said let me make the songs of a nation and i care not who makes its laws absolutely absolutely see what i'm saying so like yeah music has such a way to shape a culture man yeah, you feel like higher precedence over that, yeah. over the laws and all that. This is getting into shakes. like a cro- cross examine section, maybe we a little do bit. We do sound kind of like cross examine <laughs> today, but even with hip hop, like you know, or maybe music in general. But I'm thinking hip hop, of course. But like, how has music, or more specifically, if you want to tag on hip hop, how has that influenced or gave way to where we're at today with this issue? Pop culture, right? How is pop culture? Or music or whatever Right How is all these media outlets And all that Shaped Yeah 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 I would definitely say It directly shapes Everything that we do Everything that we believe Um, Because Especially my generation You know My generation And even Younger than me We are directly And have been directly Influenced by the things That we've heard And watched Mm. Um, Most of the stuff That I ended up Doing and believing during my teens was because of the music I was listening to. Right. It took for me for me to grow up and actually realize, man, I need to learn to have my own opinion when it comes to these things. And um, and and what I mean by that is own opinion is whatever I believe in. Like if I said, because I, I used to call myself a Christian when I was a teen, but obviously I was living other than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, as an adult, it's like I can't allow pop culture to influence mm-hmm. me any. In any way compared to how the Bible influences me, mm. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Bible, God, God's word, and what He has to say on these topics, it needs to be the direct influence on how I believe and how I go about my life. Right. So coming into contact with Scripture with, with Christ, yeah, has allowed you to really see, like, yeah, right. How much What's, of a grip that music, specifically, since that's the question that you had, right? Um, how it had a hold of me, mm. and you know, songs like. And, and this is something I'm going to say for another episode with, with Tupac and keep your head up. You know, I got to throw Tupac in the episode. <laughs> right. Um, he, he, he pretty much was going on to say that a woman has the choice to do whatever she wants with her body. Hmm. Which is kind of contradicting when you think about the message that he had in Brenda's Got a Baby. But that's another episode. <laughs> that that right. I was going to bring that up today, but we just don't have the time for that. Right. But, yeah, it directly influences. The music yeah. that you listen to directly so, influences too. how you think about this topic. Yeah, man. Yeah. For sure. Um, I did want to talk about some things. And what's up, y'all that are watching? Um, I threw something in the comment section. It was a question. Do you guys think that abortion, talking about it, is it essential how important do you think this topic is? Where do you stand on this topic and why? Hmm. Go ahead and answer that question while you guys are watching. Go ahead and like it and share it. Keep on going in, in the comment section. I just thought that this is cool, that this is a recurring theme um, that's been on the podcast. Like we've talked about in episode nine, even how the church avoids things like this topic because we're scared of offending others. Yeah, People might reject us. We try to avoid persecution. Yep. It's just something that we talked about the last episode. Episode nine, another thing we talked about is the fact that we're living um, in America where it went from being pro-Christ to now totally anti-Christ. Yep. And it, it, it's actually attacking Christian principles right. while still trying to adopt them at the same time. But that's that's a whole nother issue right there. But yeah. we live in a totally anti-Christ culture where it's like, if you say something that goes against the grain of what culture is saying, especially if it's something that Christ said, they're attacking you right away. And, and they're, they're going to call you a bigot right. and closed-minded. Even the, the very uh, thing that uh, first John, John was writing right. against the whole right. idea of say, you know, saying that Christ did not come into the flesh. Anyone who right. says that is of the Antichrist. You know, so that, right. that, that spirit of Antichrist really... Uh, shows us you know uh this idea that this hatred almost or or it is a hatred 
of connecting the spirit with the flesh. That was the idea. Like they denied the incarnation. Yep. You know, so they were undermining the very birth of Christ mm -hmm. that he came in the flesh. And that's that's exactly what abortion is. You know, they're, they're trying to just undermine life. Yeah. Undermine that idea that this is a person. Yeah. Um, it, it, isn't it crazy how when Christ was born, they were going around killing all those babies right. at that they time? Trying like, to get to him. Yeah. Anyway. Happened yeah. in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I, yeah. When I think about us living in an antichrist culture i wanted to bring this up in first timothy chapter three it says but mark this there will be terrible times in the last days people will be lovers of themselves mm. lovers of money boastful proud abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy without love unforgiving slanderous without self-control mm. brutal not lovers of the good treacherous rash conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God mm. having a form of godliness but denying its power having nothing have nothing to do with such people and I just thought man no wonder why these people want abortion so bad look at the times yeah all of those reasons right there that 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 show signs of the last days they're all actually excuses or justifiers to abortion mm. right we love money so when we have kids it takes away from our money <laughs> we love ourselves therefore yeah. we're not willing to sacrifice our body and our lives and our to time. have kids our times everything yeah. We're, yeah. we're um we're proud um we're abusive we're disobedient to our parents which plays a direct role in our parenthood right ungrateful unholy without love come on bro yeah. without self-control how do we even how do our generation for the most part even get pregnant in the first place right right even when you, you say well you're out there having sex obviously yeah. that's how you get pregnant right you say well what about the the babies that are here because of rape without self-control right, right. <laughs> without self-control we're brutal we're not lovers of the good treacherous lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god i just thought man like that whole section right there yeah. is absolutely yeah. why we even justify having abortion today if right. you look at that yeah, it just shows right. the whole antichrist culture um and the antichrist spirit behind justifying having mm -hmm. abortion today and the wow. church is gonna fall for that too there's people that in the church is gonna fall for that i thought about this episode four we we talked about our value in christ mm. Our value to Christ. We're talking yeah. about that again in this episode. Episode one, and I'll, this is where I'll stop with the recurring themes, is that we can't expect non-believers to feel the same way that we do about this topic. Yeah. Why? Because they're not part of the body, which means that only God can judge them. <laughs> when it comes to these laws, we, we right. need to remember this right here. So I just thought, man, like I, we could go through more recurring themes, but... How many times do we do that in every episode where we touch on things that we touched on already? Yeah, it's all connected, man. All connected, which yeah. shows the consistency in our argument yeah. and our stance. Glory yeah. to God. We got anything going, going in the comment section? Yeah, we got people definitely. Um... Uh, Juan says rejection comes with the territory. Yeah. Then uh, Raphael says we all must pray and keep pray uh, and keep praying. I think he was saying at all times, uh, while times get worse, uh, very evil time and school killings too. Yeah, it's all connected. Uh, Karen Thompson says, if we are saying we want to be biblical with abortion as a church, then are we also going to be biblical with women who are single moms who have not chosen abortion? Right. This episode is also for those that are on the wrong side of the spectrum when, you, when it comes to the Christians that yeah. are pro-choice yeah the christians that are okay with people getting abortions and stuff like that why because you have people that are that will say we as a, as a church we care more about protecting babies and caring for them when they're inside of the womb rather than yeah. when they're outside of the womb when they're outside of the womb we don't care about them anymore but when they were inside the womb we cared for them we we went on strike and we, we you know we 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 um picketed outside of the abortion centers and we did all this stuff to help the babies that are inside the womb hmm. and karen brings up a good point like are we going to care about the moms 
and the babies that come from those that actually keep their baby instead of aborting them. Right. Are we going to do that? Step up. That yeah, that's so good, and that's why the local church is important. Absolutely, we need to do what we're supposed to do, man. Yeah, you know, and be there. And it, you know, it's funny because you're talking about the inconvenience that people think about when they have an abortion, and it's sad that a lot of Christians feel the inconvenience and in taking care of those who don't. You know? Yeah. Like. Yeah. I think it's easy to point and say, yeah, you know, you were selfish for having an abortion. You were this. But then we kind of display that same attitude. For sure. You know, with, with women who decide, you know what, I'm going to do what's right. Yeah. But we don't think in terms of walking alongside and sacrificing ourselves, man. Well, and, we, a lot of us become self-righteous when we look at someone doing something horrible. Like, it's always easier. Yeah. To point always. at somebody else, man. Yeah, yeah. You know. And you know what they say about... When you point the point point a finger at somebody else, right? It's three pointed yeah. back at <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All we right. gotta remember that. We gotta stay humble. True that. So the main oh wait, we still got more in the comment section. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Um Juan says we live in trouble sometimes, amen. David says we should fear the Lord that we might be hiding the time of trouble. Ezekiel nine, he's quoting that. Yep. Ezekiel 9, verses 9 through 6. Or, uh, I'm sorry. Yep. No, Ezekiel 9, 1 through 6. 1 through 6, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Francis says, as a new believer, I stood on the fence about abortion. It wasn't until my dad, until my old pastor took my, took our church through the scripture, showing us why abortion is against the will of God. When he got to Exodus 21, 22, I was heartbroken. So, yeah, for sure, a topic that should be talked about with scripture, backing it up. Otherwise, it's just an opinion, which is funny that you mentioned that because I was just about to back up what we were saying with scripture. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So the main crux of this whole discussion today is dealing with this question. Is there life in the womb? Yeah. Or is it just a clump of cells? Mm. Is it just a bunch of cells that are put there and. You know, it's not life yet until it comes out of the womb. Because yeah. that's what some people believe. Um, hmm. and we need to remember that God is not only one who create, not only the one who creates life in the womb, but he values life in the womb. Right. Um, scriptures that prove that life is in the womb. I got three for you. And there's more, but I just want to give you three. Just as a testimony right here for you created my and this is Psalm 139 right here. Psalm 139 verses 13 through 16 for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was wo woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained me for all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Right. Second verse um, in Psalm 22. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast for birth. I was cast upon you from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Job 31, did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one form us both within our mothers? Mm. That right there just shows you, and, and there's more places in scriptures that talk about God creating life in the womb. Yeah. It starts in the womb. It doesn't yeah. start outside of the womb. Yeah, man. Um, we got to remember that not only Christianity, but the Bible itself supports the notion that there's life in the womb. Yeah. Paul even said in Galatians 1.15, but when he, when he who had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace, and he continues. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. God had plans. He has plans and he has purposes. Yeah. Christians in the Bible have been against abortion for a long time <laughs> right. now. We need to right. stop acting like it's a new thing to actually be for abortion as a Christian. That's a new yeah, thing. And that, that doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't. I, but that's what happens when you <laughs> when you give in to the peer pressure that culture 
yeah. presses on us. Yeah, right. Society is really good at like making us fold. Yeah, that's for sure. Psalm one twenty seven three, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. Yeah. The fruit of the womb, a reward. Yeah, it's not a burden, man. Yeah, it's an, it's not an inconvenience. It's a reward. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. Saints throughout all history have been against abortion um, and just leaving babies to die. And we know that because there were saints in mm. the early part of Christianity, even right. up until now, that were finding babies that were cast to the side, little Roman babies and stuff like that. Mm. They were finding them on the on the roadside, finding them in areas where the, the mother or the father knew that the baby was going to die. They were finding the babies and adopting them into their families. Mm. Look that up in, into church history. Um, the church don't get no trophies for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they don't get rewarded for that type of stuff right yeah. there on this earth. Nobody's going to give them that credit. The fact that they've been doing that. They've been opening up um, places for kids that are left motherless and fatherless and caring for those that um, need help raising their kids. Like, the church don't get enough credit for that, man. And that's all right, though. Yeah, I, no, I get it. I get <laughs> yeah. it. I'm just, God I bring this up it. because we, we, we tend to ignore these things. Yeah. That the church has been against a, abortion and been against, it, it's it's been for caring for life inside of the womb and outside of the womb, especially yeah. outside of the womb. Yeah. So anybody that tells you otherwise, they need to, they need to stop tripping. Stop yeah. tripping and, and really look into the history of this. And know how evil that is. Yeah. You know, it's it's the very spirit behind, you know, uh, well, really being an anti-Christ, you know, spirit. Yeah. Um, that's, when we think in terms of anti-Christ, we're talking about something that is not just, uh, how would you say, opposite of what we believe. We're talking about something that's out to undermine what we believe right you know mm -hmm. and take us away from the truth um so this is no little thing man it, this is an aggressive uh you know evil wicked idea that one could think that the fruit of the womb is not a reward it's it's a burden <laughs> or a curse or an a curse yeah or an std <laughs> Yo, Planned Parenthood is yo, tripping. Yo. Pregnancy is an STD. Um, I want to say one more thing when it comes to Christianity and the Bible and God supporting, um, caring for life in and outside of the womb is that there was capital punishment that was dished out, given and handed out. If you attacked a pregnant woman and actually killed that fetus, I'll say that if you killed the fetus, that was inside of her the baby ended up dying you actually it was capital punishment dished out on you why because god knows that there's life inside of the right, womb right. life for a life right life for a life you kill the baby inside of the womb that that life is just as precious hmm. as, as someone's life that's outside of the womb i think that happened in new york somewhere or that yeah. was put into question now and, and, and yeah not even in the bible is but like in real life if if I, let's just say you know your wife is pregnant obviously you know what i mean like your wife is pregnant and somebody comes up and hits her and she ends up losing the baby pennsylvania says that that person is going to get in trouble yeah because even pennsylvania acknowledges even if they support abortion they acknowledge at some point there is life in that womb. Yeah. Which is crazy because if you can support it that far, why? Why? Do, yeah. Again. Why not from the gate? Give, they, they give in. <laughs> they, I, I know what it is. They, they're giving in to the changing times and culture. Well, okay. Back on. Yeah. All right. All right. So we were at the part where I was going to ask the audience another question. And then we were actually concluding pretty much. We were almost concluding. Yeah. So let me let me um let me jump in the comments section. Um <laughs> Let me see if we're back on. It says on your end that we're back on, but I don't know. Let's see. Let me see the comment section real quick. Okay. It Wait. says that we're on and it's on the same video as before. Okay. Then, all right. Oh, so, yeah. 
Are we still on? All right, those of you that are watching, <laughs> let us know if you guys can still hear us, see us. They should still be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like we're still in the same video. Okay. Uh, it cut off and then cut back on. Francis, are you saying yup to us? Or are you saying yup to something else? Okay, you, you guys are good. All right, okay. Let's continue. So I do have a question for you guys in the, in the comment section, and uh, and I'll put it in there. All right. Go ahead and share this video, those of you that haven't done it already. Um. Yeah, we 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 got okay. Good, everybody's saying right, that. Dope. Okay. Well, uh -huh. let's conclude and then uh, that what, the question for the audience. Let right. me just ask. Oh, them real okay. Quick. My bad. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, and you can answer this real quick before we conclude. Okay. Have you ever had tough or awkward conversations with others concerning abortion? Yeah. How did it conclude? Yeah. So, um, for those of y'all who don't know, uh, and my wife wouldn't mind me sharing this, my wife actually had an abortion. Oh, wow. I didn't know. We were going through the outline and you didn't even mention that. I, I was... You, know, you had to ask her permission first. Well, I didn't even ask her right now, but oh, no, nice. she she wouldn't mind though. Okay, you know, and, and I think it could be something that uh, it wasn't, of course, my my child. Oh, okay, oh, right? okay, I got you, I got you. I got it was, you. Uh, yeah, and she she went through that experience. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so yeah, I I've had awkward conversations about that somewhat. We don't talk about it a lot, but. Um, we mainly talk about her experience and what she felt. And it's part of our testimony on how the Lord brought us back together, you know, because we we, we were dating. Uh, this was years ago, by the way. This was when we were young and um, we dated and we didn't do things right the first time we broke up and then um, things happened in between. Right. You know, and uh, that happened and then we got back together. Uh, and it became part of our story, you know, how, you know, uh, she went through that and I went through what I went through and how God brought us back, reconciled and everything. And th those conversations were, were hard to have. Yeah. You know, and maybe we could share that testimony later on in detail. But I have had that conversation, that awkward conversation. You know? <laughs> so I kind of up and close. I know I know what that's like. OK. You know, so did you yeah. want to conclude then with that? With, with something else, I mean, did you, is there anything you wanted to conclude? Why, well, why you guys are answering that question in the comment section? We're gonna conclude the audio part of this. Yeah. So let's let's do that. Right. Well, I think an R.C. Spro quote would fit. You know. Um, so he said, "Indeed, as others have said, the most dangerous place in the United States for a human being is inside of the womb of a woman." R.C. said that. Yeah. Yikes. And I think he's right because you're the most helpless. You yeah. Have, you can't fight back. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. And, uh, man, it's even hard talking about it right now. Just how helpless the baby is and, you know, how even the, 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 the procedure, how evil, man, like yeah. how hard it is to see something like that. Uh, and then my heart goes out to the women going through that because I was go reading stories of women and the trauma afterwards yeah that's real man people don't talk about that with this issue they don't how traumatic it is you know so when i hear saying yo like it is a sin you know and there needs to be repentance but god is an amazing god who forgives you know we see that with david we see that with many men in scripture we see that with our own lives you know god is a merciful god he's gracious he calls out he calls it out for what it is you know it's sin and it needs repented of but come to christ you yeah. know and he'll wash you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness you know yeah so we we have to remember that part you know if, if you're out there and you went through this you bought an abortion or you did an abortion like know that god is able you know to cleanse you from all unrighteousness forgive you of your past my wife went through that she's been forgiven you know she's free um the lord is 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 he restores, uh, he renews, you know, and he does all things new. Um, so, yeah, I think it is dangerous. The most dangerous place to be today is in the mother's womb. Um, but those of us who have gone through this and experienced this and done this, uh, there is forgiveness. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 
Yeah, man. Sure. Um, I think I think a good question to conclude with is, what about God? What mm. about God? Are we even considering God's viewpoint on this, mm. on this matter? Are we that self-centered and self-righteous and self-elevated? Have we become so involved with comforting that we forget about the comforter mm. and the Holy Spirit, right? Um, another thing I want to say as we conclude is, I know that Captain America gets all the props for being the first Avenger. <laughs> but as we all know, God is the true first Avenger. Right. And we can rest assured that un because unborn babies have no voice, we can rest assured that, that, that they are part of the helpless and the defenseless that God avenges. Amen. True that. Um, and now I just thought these were some dope, deep thoughts. The dope, deep yeah. thoughts. Um, yeah. is, is the comparison of the world neglecting us and leaving us to the side, mm. yet God adopted us. Mm. Amen. Um, the gospel speaks on this issue. Um, and then I thought this was another thing. I got a couple things right here. The first person to recognize Jesus in the womb was an unborn child. <laughs> right. I thought that was dope. That is dope. I thought that was dope. Like, right. Jesus was in the womb and another baby in the womb recognized him. Right. As a savior of the world. That's dope. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Don't ever think that the babies in the, in the womb are, are not understanding things they do yeah they do that's why people play music they understand they play music in the stop like you know i do got a story the baby with, understands yeah. the voice of the mom and the dad like yeah. all of those things Yo. man stop playing when there's Zion, life in the womb when zion was born i remember like he came out he was you know crying like crazy freaked out right and i started talking to him just like i talked to him when he was in lynette's you know belly like i started talking and he started calming down when oh, he heard my man. voice that's he crazy knew. Yeah. you know what i'm saying it's just wild man um, yeah it's frustrating to see people try to deny that that yeah, there's like no more. way man it's and they life they, like like earlier we said that they've turned the tomb into they turned the womb into a tomb yeah you know what i mean the and it's, into it's sad a tomb, they yeah. turned the womb into a tomb and it's sad, sad y'all yeah. yeah. um also we can't forget the victims of rape we didn't touch on this today too much but we're not going to sit here and act like that's not a horrible thing that they've had happen to them we didn't get to touch on everything that we wanted to today but yeah. we're not going to sit here and act like that's not a horrible thing yeah um but we also can't forget women who've had abortions and are wondering if there's any forgiveness. You know, we can't forget them either. Hmm. So these are things that we're probably, again, this is part one of many discussions to come. Yeah. Um, we didn't get to touch on the whole being raped and keeping the baby or get rid of, getting rid of the baby. Uh, it's probably best to do on another topic. Hmm. But I do have one more thing to say for this conclusion is self-control over birth control. <laughs> Um, if, right. if we started dealing with the whole self-control issue, we wouldn't have to be dealing with the whole adoption thing. If we started dealing with those, I mean, uh, abortion thing, right? We wouldn't have to be dealing yeah. with that as much. Yeah, we really, we really wouldn't. And again, you know, you say, well, what about the ones that are raped? First of all, it's very small percentages. I'm not undermining it, but it's very small percentages on women who have been raped and actually got pregnant, right? But not only that, but again self-control or birth control if we dealt with the self-control issues um and god actually entered these people's lives that are thinking about raping people yeah there could be a lot of rape prevented if yeah. the self-control was actually um dealt with in the first place for sure so this is where we end the audio part of the podcast right. those of you that are watching on facebook stay here stay tuned stay on here because we have more to come right um, in the meantime, we'll conclude. This has been The Basement, episode 10, Baby Talk. Yep. Basement, where theology meets the thoughts of life. Do that. Guys, make sure you tune in next Wednesday. Um, next Wednesday on this page, Wrath and Grace at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a special episode. Yeah. Did you put that overlay up yet? I want to put it You're up waiting right to now. drop it, it right it's, now. It's, as soon as you... You guys have to watch this next episode. We're excited about this one, yeah. We're bringing some ladies in the basement. Yeah, ladies night. 
Ladies night in the basement. <laughs> All right. We're sneaking some ladies down here. All right. Represent. You know, it's going to be an exciting uh, episode. Um, and again, make sure you share every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Uh, Facebook.com slash Wrath and Grace. And we do have a group that, man, if, if y'all can just show us some love, be a part of it. It's uh, Facebook.com slash group slash The Basement. We like to, you know, uh, we do like warm ups uh, in there. We do videos prior to the episodes to kind of like give you guys a heads up. Um, and we're going to do a couple other things, man. Let's Did see. you comment here? Hold on. It's going to stop and then we're going to have to continue. We're recording again now. Yeah, cut off a little bit. My bad, my bad. Cut off twice on us. It's crazy. All right, let me see. It's just a interrupt. Ah, oh, that was Johan who said cheer. Yeah, that's what I said. Was that uh, <laughs> no, that wasn't me. Okay. All right, y'all. Do, do you guys hear us? We're back. We're good. Yeah, those of you that are watching, let us know. We're going to conclude the audio part of this with a short prayer. I just want to make sure we're on. Can somebody let us know back on? Yep. Okay, we're good. Yep. All right. Well, Father, we thank you for uh, this episode, and we ask that you would uh, just minister um, with truth and uh yeah, just uh, we ask that you would um, help the church deal with this issue. Help us to be truthful and compassionate to those in need. Um, and so we just thank you for uh, your word, the scriptures that give us the clear truth that govern our lives. We thank you uh, that you're able to convict and correct and train us for righteousness so that we can go and be the body. So we ask for those that have gone through this issue that you would uh, forgive, restore, and renew. Um, and we just ask so that the church will learn how to continue to be truthful and loving uh, to those in need. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Um, and that's where we'll conclude this episode. Episode 10 of The All Basement. Right. Baby Talk. Make sure you guys tune in next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at Wrath and Grace. Right. The Basement, where theology meets the thoughts of life. Cheer. All right. <laughs> cool, cool. Deuces. Um, All right. We're still on. Uh, Juan said it was more than twice, but y'all good now. <laughs> um, yeah. So you guys that are watching on Facebook, stay tuned. We're still on here. We just had to conclude right there. Yeah. And uh, real quick, uh, shout out to my man, Dre Brown. Yeah, Steph. Uh, you got an Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, email. You got a phone number too, but I'm not gonna give you all that. I can't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, that'd be crazy for him to get all these calls from people he don't know. <laughs> all right. So, sorry about the feeds cutting off. That's the first time this cut off twice. Somebody said it was more. Yeah, Juan said it was really? more. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, and you know what, guys? Those of you that are watching, uh, I asked the question earlier, and I'll put it up again, um, because not everybody answered it. I don't know if you just ignored me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but um, not everybody answered it, and I'm 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 curious to hear what you guys have to say on this one. So I'm gonna put it up again. So have you ever had tough and awkward conversations with others concerning abortion, and how did it conclude? Did I ask you that question earlier? Yes. Losen, you answered it? Yes. That's where you were talking about your wife, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone said, yeah, women who are feminists can be very difficult to discuss it with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, for sure. But like I was saying to Los yesterday, is it's crazy because feminists that have a problem with um, us being pro-life... Um, you know the feminists that are like i should you be able to choose and um abortions are okay don't those feminists know that they're killing off potential f females yeah <laughs> like you're killing yeah. off potential female population <clears throat> 
What if you killed one of the strongest feminists that was going to be born in the womb? You killed that baby right in the womb. That woman could have that 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 baby could have grown up and led your feminist agenda even further, but you killed yeah. that baby in the womb. That's crazy. Ah, you know, it, it just it's so backwards. It's so it backwards. Is. It's it's like the the, the 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 black people that are for abortions and it's like oh you're for abortions but you're also for black lives matter well if black lives matter so much then don't you realize that abortions are killing the black lives <laughs> that actually you say matter <clears throat> it's wild it's wild francis bank says i have the convo but it's usually at the <coughs> abortion clinic and it's with the escorts the ones that bring other women into the clinic for abortions. Mm. Wait, how do you have these convos, Francis? Do you go to the abortion uh, centers, abortion clinics and talk to them? Or you just happen to work there or something like that? Yes. That's another thing is, it, you know, I thought at times to get a group of us to go and to pray, you know, or even minister at the abortion clinic and you know what's funny that not funny but the, i think the truth is some people just put vibes on that like are oh, y'all one of those churches yeah it's like <laughs> it just boggles the mind man i don't get it um i said appreciate you tunic and tuning tuning in so <laughs> tunic in yeah I, you know. that could be a new thing man tunic in tunic in just walking outside tunic in um tiffany said i've had tough conversations with a non-believer the conversation concluded with the person feeling like her beliefs are her beliefs and my beliefs are mine mm. yeah yeah uh, you're gonna find that you, you know i agree to this you know we're gonna agree to disagree but at the same time, they're also thinking that you're wrong. They're right. Yeah, but they were born to have beliefs. Yeah, and that's, like, yeah, that's the backwardness. <laughs> and there's so much backwardness to the liberal approach. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, you can have you beliefs. can make that choice now yeah, that you're, now that you're now out that, of the womb. Yeah, now that someone decided to keep you rather than abort you. It's wild. Again, it goes back to that argument where it's like men shouldn't be allowed to talk on female issues. You shouldn't be allowed. Men shouldn't be allowed to make laws on female issues. Huh. Then why are the born allowed to make laws on the unborn? See what I'm saying? That's the backwardness of this all. Huh. Charlie said Hillary Clinton asked Mother Teresa, why do you think we had a female? Pre why do you think? We haven't had a female pre president yet. Without missing a beat, Mother Teresa said she probably was aborted. And it left Hillary Clinton speechless. Dang, smack to the face. Oh, that was a double smack. <laughs> that was a chick slap to the face. <laughs> <laughs> Francis Banks, there's an abortion clinic ministry with Bread of Life Church. I go with them at times. Uh, there are. They are way more faithful than me about going. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what's up, yeah. I the movie that. Unplanned. I heard that was banned from Canada. I believe it. Yeah. Tiff went to go see it with a couple friends. Oh, okay. And what's crazy is she went into the movie theater with her one friend that was actually pro-choice. By the end of the movie, she was crying in tears and Ooh. totally changed her view. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So Tiff saw the immediate results of that movie. That's dope. I still haven't seen it yet, yeah. but yeah. I, I'm I'm very excited to see it. That's what's up. I can't promote it because I haven't seen it. Okay. But I definitely. If it's good, I'm we should watch it, it like at the church or something like that. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I did have some questions for you, as people are still in the comments section. I did okay. have some questions for you. These are the speed round questions. Cool. Man. Let's not forget these ones. Oh boy. I got to put the speed round cameras on, I guess. <laughs> All right. These are where I ask Los a question and he answers it without thinking. He answers it impulsively. No, <laughs> he just answers it in a fashionable time. And That's I like all. this beat, so I'm going to loop this beat to make me more comfortable. Okay. Those of you that are watching, go ahead and comment. Go ahead and like. Go ahead and share this video. 
Yeah. Um, if y'all got questions, ask them too. Yeah, ask questions. Tell yeah. us your opinion. Yeah. Even if you disagree with us. Yeah. We're okay with that. Yep. We invite somebody to watch this. You can hit the invite button. Invite somebody to watch this. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> How does the church maintain gospel authenticity while dealing with this issue? Yeah. I think uh, the only way to deal with this issue and remain genuine and authentic is to remember. I mean, this is going to sound, you know, kind of like a dumb, uh, dust statement. Or well, maybe not because this is not happening, actually. But I think the church stays with what the Bible says clearly about life. The passages we we read talk about how God's involved in design and carefully, you know, uh, uh, putting together people in the womb. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I think when we understand like God's involvement and what God thinks and hold that dear to us, which we see in the scriptures, holding dear to that and being very reverent about that. Um, I think you can feel almost like a church moving away from that. Okay. Because if you're so close to it, then you'll feel the distance when it starts happening. You oh, know? Sure. So a high view of scripture, I think, will maintain a church, uh, its effectiveness and its authenticity. Mm. Solo scriptura. Mm. I don't know how to say it, you know. <sighs> yeah. Um, next question. Is this abortion being in agreement with abortion? Is this a deal breaker for attending a church? Yeah. I'm going to say yes. Why? Why? Um, because abortion, the termination of a life, is the antithesis of the gospel. Okay. I think so. I, I, I think it flies in the face of, you know, uh, because being a Christian means you're born again. It means you've been given life, eternal life. And here you are terminating life. You know what I'm saying? So I think if so, now, if someone's willing to discuss and chop it up and be willing to be convinced and that's different yeah. but when you have someone aggressively protesting and championing uh abortion rights and issues and and, and is out there like nah we can't mm -hmm. have that you know what i'm saying but you can have someone coming into church uh with that view and if there's room for discussion and dialogue and conversations and that's a i think that's a little different then i guess it's a case by case gotcha you know I mean? gotcha that's good that's good yeah um have you ever stood somewhere have you ever stood somewhere else on the spectrum concerning your convictions when it comes to abortion was there ever a time in your life where you stood on the other side of the spectrum where you were in agreement with it no never no even prior to salvation i was gonna say then why why? Why? Why did you always stand on this side of the spectrum? I think because mainly I think Hispanics, because that's I'm I'm Hispanic. I'm Puerto Rican. Puerto Ricans, uh, at least in my generation, tended to be very, very family oriented and conservative. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Big families and yeah, family being all my up grandma, in your business. My and grandmother close. had I think like uh, what was it, 15, 16 <laughs> children. You know what I'm saying? Mine had 12, so yeah. <laughs> right. So that, that generation uh, of Hispanics really produced uh, a Half lot of... Half of Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I think Hispanics in my generation just were already by default conservative and had moral values yeah. and things like that. Like, we, we, we were very sensible yeah. and very commonsensical about things uh, and very about family. So I think that guarded us, shield, shielded us at least from the immorality and the craziness that was happening. And of course we had crazy in our families. We had the uncle Tony's and, and all them that were wilding. But I think for the most part, I think we were very concerned about our ethics and moral worth. Gotcha. I think, but that's being lost even in our culture, man. 
For sure, for sure. And, and, you know, to even comment on that, big families and stuff, a lot of people don't want that today. You know why? Yeah. It's because they're, they're scared of not being able to keep up with the Joneses. Right. And they're, they, they're scared of their family struggling a little bit. Yeah. Like, my mom and them, because, you know, she was the youngest of 12. There was She talks about all the time, like, you know, there were so many times where she just... She doesn't even remember getting new clothes. It was just always hand-me-downs. Mm. Um, they were, you know, they ate the same food every day. A big right. pot of rice. Yeah. <laughs> Goya was in the crib like crazy. I remember. <laughs> yeah, that was a routine like thing. The, the pot of rice every day. And and I was like, why? Didn't you get tired of that? So like, but that's all we had. Yeah, And we always, you know, for some reason, we had enough. You know, my grandmother, she she had enough. She made it work. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it can happen. Just do we want it to happen like that? Right. Because we want to be able to keep up with everybody. That's yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah. So, all right, got an, another one. Um, what should the church's response be when it comes to dealing with disagreement in their congregation on this topic? What is the church's response when there's disagreement yeah. on this topic? <laughs> I'm wondering why is there disagreement on this topic mm -hmm. in the be to begin with, you know? Well, you have a lot of people coming from the outside. They're newer believers or, right. you know what I mean? Like, why you have them in the church and then maybe this topic gets brought up yeah. after a year of that person attending the church. Right. And then other people are like, yeah, I agree with Yeah, and it can, yeah. It I can get, really yeah. start up a fire. I think that it's important for a church to, like, I think we... The Bible Fellowship Church has a statement on this issue. That's yeah. where we land. Right. You know, so we can see that from the gate. Like, y'all so, came in, but this is where we've been. This is one of the essentials <laughs> that need to be addressed early in the game, is what you're saying. Yeah, I think they should have an idea. You know, that's why I want to give out uh, to the members coming into our church uh, the biblical uh, principles for living that we have. Uh, that explain our conduct as a church, and this is one of our uh, the issues we've already dealt with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Our denomination has made a statement, and we stand by it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's that's why it's important to have it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's. I just had four questions for you today, and you answered them like that. Cool. Um, Francis said, "Unplanned. You should probably." Look more into the producers in the background of the movie. It might surprise you to say the least. Okay. Davina goes on to say, I heard there were problems or concerns with this movie. Hmm. Yeah. And you know what? If you look into the background and all that of The Passion of the Christ, too, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching that movie like a couple years ago and I started noticing there is a lot of Catholic tendencies. Right. You could see the worship of Mary in the movie. Now that I say that, you'll probably go back and watch the Passion of Christ and be like, whoa, mm -hmm. now I see it. it they, they really uh, had a higher reverence for Mary that just seemed close to a deity type of approach to it. Hmm. Almost like, you know, like what the Catholics believe. And then when you find out, like behind the scenes, um, Jim Cavalli or whatever his name is, Cavazio or something like that. The guys behind the scenes, the producer and him, the main guy, right. the, Mel um, Gibson, Mel Gibson, right. and yeah. they would have they would actually have um, mass every day mm. before before they started the set. So yeah. they were like very Catholic. Yeah, it's not. I'm, yeah. I'm not surprised yeah. to see you know when you start putting all that together with the Passion of Christ. Right. But God uses it. Right. God uses those things in spite of our own flaws, our own wickedness. Right. So I'm sure this unplanned movie um, right. can probably still be used. Yeah. I don't, I haven't watched it. I haven't looked into anything that they're saying, but now, yeah. to be fair, uh, Charlie Salcedo, he's Catholic. They don't worship Mary, you know, uh, they won't say that theologically speaking, you know, now I they pray to her, correct? Yeah, they do. Um, so if you if you define prayer as a form of worship, then yes. Don't they bow down to the statues? You know, um, yes. I think they use the statue as a intermediary. Yeah, I've you know, I've heard thing, that right? she's is on the same level as the Holy Spirit. Well, I mean, technically, 
on a theological technical tip, they wouldn't they wouldn't say okay. that. All right, gotcha. Yeah, so I just wanted to clear that up. But I would argue, Charlie, uh, you know, maybe this could be a, a chop up session that um, I, I am with Calvin on this one. I, I do think the whole uh, uh, separation that Catholics make with praying to and praying uh, and worship, they make a distinction there. But I think it's hard to make those distinctions when we see the outcome and the practice of it you know you, you know what i'm saying so like sometimes what it looks like is worship yeah. you know uh even though the technicalities have been defined but that's another <laughs> that's another uh another topic well their view of mary the fact that they still believe that mary mary didn't have other kids right right like yeah. they 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 put her on a whole higher level, but right. Right, again, right. no, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear, yeah. You. yeah, 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 that's a whole yeah, no other doubt, no topic. Doubt. Um, um, so um, Jerry Lalik says, how do you answer people who says that an embryo, an embryo, I'm sorry, without a heartbeat is not a human being? I have to do the research on that. I'm not sure about that. I, I'm 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 of the view that at conception life begins. You know? So life life is present without the heartbeat. Yeah, the heartbeat bill, for instance, you know, that's out there. Yeah. No, I'm asking you. You believe that life is at conception yes. before the heartbeat. Well, at conception. Yeah, because con at, con at conception yeah. is before the heart is even formed at that point. Yeah. The con physical heart. Conception is when the, 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 the you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what that. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So then right. you would, to answer that right there, you believe that life starts with before the heartbeat does. Yeah. I mean, as soon as there. Because the, the, the heart isn't formed at the point of conception. It's right. not there. Right. So you believe that life starts before yeah, the heartbeat. Absolutely. Yeah, yes, so, yes, yes. Yeah. I was just I was just like a little confused about that, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. Um Yeah. I, I would I would agree too, but he says how do you answer people? Uh I, again, you gotta go with what scripture says. All right. If if God is the one who's putting our inward parts together inside of the womb. There you go. Then that lets you know right there, like before the heart starts beating, God is putting those parts in He's place. Forming, yeah. As soon as conception starts, there's a formative process that begins, and God's involved in that. Yeah, you're cutting that. Yeah, you if, if you've ever watched the, the 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 Avengers movie, you know about the quantum realm, and God <laughs> created the quantum realm, and He works in the quantum realm. <laughs> right. Um, because the reason why I bring that up is because you obviously can't see the baby's body with the natural eye. You, yeah. You're you're entering some quantum level type magnification to get to even see that baby and imagine trying to move a heart around and, and create those, all those yeah. inward parts at that level. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the quantum level at that point. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> True that. So a quick. I, I, I agree with that, Charlie. Life begins at conception. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Jerry's question was more like, "How do you answer that?" Then. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, sometimes you got to just give them that statement. Life begins at conception. Yeah. <laughs> and God's involved in that process. Absolutely. And point out the passages. Drop the mic after that. You know. Yeah. But again, ladies' night coming next week, y'all. Make sure you check it out. Um, you know, um, I think you were calling it something else, weren't you? Ladies in the basement. Ladies in the basement. And, uh, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, again, uh, make sure you join our group, facebook.com slash group slash the basement. I said that quick. And we are on every Wednesday at 9 p.m. here on Wrath and Grace. Make sure you check it out. Yeah. Hey, that's good, Charlie. At the moment of conception, the embryo has its own distinct DNA. When a woman takes a pregnancy test, the positive indicates another DNA present. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Hey, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry. What Charlie said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's good. I like that. I like that. That that he definitely brings up a good point. Mm -hmm. DNA. Having its own distinct DNA. It's yeah. a really good one. Yeah, man. Did you cut that off? Cut what off? Or the beat did that 
Where no, that was, yeah, yeah, no, that was the Oh, okay, because yeah, I was just yeah. going to say at that point, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. I don't have any more um, content, but we can stay in this comment section. Do you think that Christians should lock arms with others, Muslims, Catholics, Seven Day Adventists, etc., to fight against um, ending abortion? No. Why? Because it's a gospel issue. You know, uh, and I'm not talking about political spheres. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about as the church, we, this is a gospel issue. So, yeah. No, you, go ahead. You do know that if it hadn't have been for the church locking arms with Muslim brothers, you wouldn't even be able to give that opinion from the civil rights movement. Well, I don't think they needed. Yeah, I don't think they needed. <laughs> I'm just, that. I'm playing devil's yeah. advocate. Yeah, no, I was just like, you wouldn't be able to give that opinion. <laughs> it's true, it's true. We wouldn't be right. able to give these opinions like this. Um, nobody would even. We wouldn't have this platform had it not been for the civil rights movement happening and the church locking arms with the Muslim Brothers. So I'm sure that there's people that's going to bring that into the equation. Right. I think honestly, I don't. I would say that was wrong, in my opinion. Locking arms with I think the church doesn't need other belief systems to voice its opinion about things. You know, um, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I, I think I, more specifically, it should be like, do you think church, the church should lock arms with others? And what I mean by the church as a body, as a right. body, should we be linking up with mosques and stuff like that? Because on a personal level, if you have a Christian who is joining with a, a person that happens to be a Muslim, but they're fighting for the same cause, I don't know if that's the same thing. Like a, uh, on a personal tip? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you have strong advocates for ending abortion from the Muslim side, and you have strong ones coming from the Christian side. Um, I think it depends on the platform. Like, again, if, if you're a representative of a district, for instance... You know, you're a Christian. That's different. But yeah, then that's what I mean by like the church of the church lock arms with the mosque. You know what I mean? Uh, I think on a personal level, if that's what you do, you're an activist. You're guaranteed to have to lock arms with people that don't believe in the same thing as you. If that's what you do. Sure. Now, if you were an activist, maybe, you know, you might feel different, but you're a pastor. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I'm saying. So like you're the shepherd. So you're protecting your sheep at the end of the day. I don't, I agree. I don't, I don't think that, you know, definitely us as a whole. And, you know, maybe that's where some of the civil rights movement went wrong hmm. was the fact that churches as a whole were locking arms with Muslim brotherhoods, mosques, like mosque temples and all that. Like they were locking arms, churches and mosques were locking temp, locking arms together. Um, maybe it should have just been at a different level, you know, Yeah. not on the whole. Yeah, I mean that, yeah. and we're we're not experts on this either. <laughs> yeah, I just know as a pastor, I wouldn't. Right. Yeah, I think the church. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I do have a reformed thug life, uh, John. I want to play. Yeah, go ahead. Is that cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. While we're still on, and then we'll get off here in a second. But um, I thought it'd be dope to to play this real quick for y'all because I, I was thinking about this the, the one time we were talking uh, let me see if I can get this here going and let y'all check this out and then we'll be on our way we shared a screen here before alright let's see here alright check it out it's over gonna boom Right here on the side. From Reform Thug Life. Check it out. Catholic, he's a missionary. I mean, she has to deal with the fact that at this point, I mean, it's not 1972 or 1980, the Democrats are, are considered the party of Planned Parenthood and selling baby parts. <laughs> now, that's gruesome. <laughs> she has to deal with that. So I think... She probably reached to a religious candidate because she realizes 
that she's going to be attacked on that. I mean, it's just based on what we've been hearing. I have to guess that that's what's going on. Planned Parenthood certainly has a very high opinion of Tim Kaine. I heard the, you know, the, the uh, president of Planned Parenthood. Right, now, now that he's out of the yeah, womb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Enough? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Bob, let's turn to the attack. I want to talk about Munich, uh, if you will. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. Oh man, reform thug life. Yeah, that was hilarious. They always got something to say. They 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 always bring up some really good clips. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been another episode of the basement. Episode ten, baby talk. Yeah, with, with problems and all. With problems all, yeah. Crazy. And I just added, I think there's some gray areas in this topic too. Yeah. Like this. This th- this was a topic that we you can't cover in an hour and a half. Heck no. No. You, know? you can't even cover it in two hours. It just it's impossible. And yeah. this is part one of many more to come. Yeah, that's for sure. And it, yeah, there's definitely a lot of holes and in- even out of our own outline that we made for this episode, half of it we didn't even get to touch on. Yeah. I have stuff that I I had to I have to plug in for later for another episode. So yeah, um, we, this is not you know exhaustive and, and and complete, guys. This topic needs to be revisited. So sure. Um, yeah. thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Basement, episode ten, Baby Talk, um, the Basement where theology meets the thoughts of life. Um, we will be back, Lord willing, next Wednesday at nine p.m. Eastern time. Right here on Wrath and Grace. Yeah. Um, episode eleven is going to be Ladies in the Basement. It's gonna be Ladies Night. So you yeah. guys make sure you tune in. Um and, and we're encouraging you guys to, you know, the the men that are watching this, encourage you to watch this with your wives. <laughs> That'd be dope. Let your wives on the show because um uh, tune in with us because we're gonna be talking about some women topics, and and guys, don't tune out next week just because we're talking about women topics right. because we're gonna be bringing some good stuff up. Right, for sure. It's gonna be a little different. Yeah. Los is gonna be in the back. I'm not gonna give y'all too much, but anyway, it's gonna it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice, yeah. y'all. It'll be good. Good topics. All right, y'all. Well, grace and peace. Yeah. With that question, you can't help but look at the political aspect of the topic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we didn't want to get into the deep politics of this this episode. Maybe yeah. some other time we will. I think we got in in and out quick. Yeah. You know, but. we did the double butt string. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sister Sharon, make sure you tune in next Wednesday. We're going to be doing a ladies night and I think your input will be valuable in that episode for sure. Yeah. As as all episodes every time you get on here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, y'all. Grace and peace and uh yeah. Try to share every Wednesday at 9 p.m. here on Wrath and Grace. God bless. God bless.